What is Shaken Bacon's? Back again, starring King Bacon. We finished watching Squid Game starring this week. Me. <laughs> starring you. It's starring me. Well, it's not starring me. Squid Bacon. Squid Bacon. Ew, gross. <laughs> um, so as we get started, first of all, I just want to preface this by saying I'm aware that the new KOTOR remake has been announced. I am planning on doing a separate podcast on that. That being said, Squid Game has also been like a big thing right now. I think a lot of people are watching it, and I thought as much as I can, I'd like to try and give like quick thoughts on this, so... I figured I would just go ahead. We'll do a quick Squid Game discussion. This may not be as long as our discussion on Shang-Chi, but um, I thought it would be fun to talk about it because, you know, I have some thoughts on it and it was a confusing ending. So before we get into spoilers, you know, the the overall gist of the show is very Hunger Games-esque and it also harkens back to what was the original Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Was mm. it just called Battle Royale? Uh, I think so. That was a Japanese movie yeah i think it was japanese was it a movie or a tv series it was a movie it was a movie yeah i've never seen it so um maybe i'm gonna have to but anyway so it's a very it's it's basically very hunger gamesy very battle royale where people decide to gamble with their lives for the hopes of winning an enormous amount of money as a prize the penalty for losing the games that they are forced to play is death is death and these are death. De- these are desperate people, and they're very desperate people. Some of them are criminals. Some of them are just really hard up. Basically, all of them are hard up for money, yeah. is the common theme. Like basically, people Crippling willing debt. to just, yeah, just debase themselves yeah. for for any kind of money. And this is set in Korea, so it's it's different from the the U.S. in terms of their economic in system. In South Korea, yeah. Um, so that's basically uh, the the gist of the game. Uh, so our without spoilers impressions. I would say this is definitely worth watching. I don't know that I can actually give this a rating because I kind of feel unqualified to rate a foreign developed movie based on my perceptions of it Well, that's as silly. a Western consumer. You should be able to rate it based on your perceptions as a viewer. Well, I have... Well, no. So the rationale I have for that is that the U.S. is known for having the almost basically the highest production value and quality so like what i would be rating this on was like the the acting was a little over the top in the first couple episodes in my opinion and then in addition to that i felt like some of the production quality was not quite at the level i would have expected but then again it's not a u.s production yeah. So the things that I would mark it down for, I feel like I should not mark it down for. No. So I don't think it's fair to give it a rating. Any, any American films. So my rating for this would not be like a numeric value. I would say, should you watch it? If you're not a child and you're good with gore, then absolutely you should watch it. It's very interesting. If you if you like the concept of Hunger Games or Battle Royale, then you're going to enjoy this. That said, I'm not talking about the kind of Battle Royale that's like a Fortnite Battle Royale. This is something a lot more intense. Um, So that's my recommendation, is watch it. Uh, For context, I liked this a lot better than Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Like, I've thought a lot about this show since I watched it, but then again, I'm also a big dystopian Hunger Games fan as well. What's your spoiler-free take on it, King Bacon? Uh, I would give this uh, maybe an 8 out of 10. That's pretty high. Yeah, it was good. Why'd you deduct points? Uh, I didn't. I didn't care for the ending. Although mm. I can, um, if I had to speculate, I'd say they intentionally left um, some loose ends, maybe to have a season two. That that would be what, what my guess would be. But it was the loose ends that you didn't like in the ending. Yeah, I would have. Uh, Spoiler free. But yeah, I'm not going into spoilers. I just think uh, it it could have went in one of two directions if they had wrapped it up in the final episode i i think it would have been a great little mini series you know I, and not even mini series it was what nine episodes yes so it was enough content for me if they're going to continue the story i may feel less interested in following it along in season two yeah because i felt like season one was a 
a definite hit. Is well encapsulated with, and, and they may have they they might have wanted to end it on a high note, in my opinion. Yeah, like I don't know if this is, I don't know if the story is is strong enough for the slow burn over many series. For me, it's it's not like a it's not like a dra- or Game of Thrones where. There is so much rich lore that they need to teach you that they span it over many, many seasons. Right. This was sort of a, you know, you get introduced to the key characters, you follow them along through the story, and then you gradually learn a little bit about them as they uh, all start to get eliminated in this uh, battle royale. Yeah. So to me, them making it seem like there may be more coming. I don't know if I am that interested. Yeah, I don't know if I'm on board with that either. It reminds me of the end of... Uh, not the... Was it the... Oh, the last really bad Aliens film that came out. Where they had, like, a spoiler for, like, the next sequel to the bad Are Aliens film. Are you talking about, like, like, Prometheus and then Alien Covenant? Those recent ones? No. Oh, Predator. Sorry, not Aliens. Predator. Oh, Predator. The last Predator. Remember how they had, like, an Iron man ass Predator Hunter armor, like, fly oh, out after yeah. the credits? Oh, yeah. They were that like, was... oh, yeah. yeah, we're going to have a Predator that was man. Bad. That was really bad. And we and people yeah. were like... And I was like, no, we don't need another one of those. Yeah, I kind of felt that way. Like, that, I don't need another series of that this. That was a swing and a miss. And ironically, that was, I believe, written by one of the actors of the original Predator film. It, I think it was directed by him. Yeah, written or directed. I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. It was a huge disappointment. But anyway, we're not, rev- we're not reviewing that. Um, overall, this series was very well acted with some shaky bits for the first couple episodes. And when I mean the first couple episodes for me, it was like once they hit episode three, the acting and like the direction and the vibes of the story really fell into place. And there wasn't so much overacting. Like for for me, the first couple episodes are very overacted. But then the writing really fleshed out. And just because I wouldn't want to see a second season does not mean I don't appreciate the first season. I thought the writing was really well done. Some of the pacing for a couple of the episodes was a bit slow, but I never, it never lost my attention. And even characters that were only appearing for a few episodes ended up really becoming more real and fleshed out to me than entire characters that I have seen in full series of shows. Um, Like one of the characters that we meet um, the she's a female character. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but she ended up really speaking to me. Well, I mean, let's yeah. go into the spoiler section then. Yeah. So anyway, talk about the deets. To wrap up the non-spoilers, great acting. I was really impressed with this. If you're going to watch it, which I think you should, definitely watch the Korean version with the English subtitles. The English dubs make it feel how did you put it you said it was like floaty yeah the emotions don't translate it was really they really did not translate. it it was like it went from yeah almost a vibrant sort of mood it there was one moment like we we watched it with the american dub for one episode because we were eating when we were watching it yeah and as soon as we finished eating and the episode was continuing we switched it back and it, it was almost like the scene just went from happy-go-lucky to like doom and gloom in in the same scene and i was like wow those subtitles really make a difference in in the viewing of the show you you don't realize it you lose the nuance of the the, actors you hear the english speaking voices you're like oh okay this is fine but they're they're just not conveying the emotion the the cultural emotions because in in foreign films you know like you were saying there was some overacting i think that might be in part due to just the cultural differences like oh, I, maybe i i if i had to speculate i would say that is probably how south koreans act and interact with each other in normal society not oh. just not just in film okay and to us it it is not as common well someone tell the south koreans they're overacting all the time <laughs> I'm just kidding. I obviously have no idea. Bunch of drama queens. <laughs> they were in this show at the first no, couple were, episodes. They were good, but uh, yeah, the English English dub version not uh. The English dub version is not it, guys, and it yeah, almost sounds like they have like the same. Unless, I know, unless you just struggle with reading on screen, 
Okay. Uh, I would encourage you to definitely avoid the English dub. Yeah, the English dub, and I know this is not the case, but it honestly sounded like they had three people doing the voices for every character. Yeah. And it, and I again, I don't think that's the case. There's a full list of people who did the English dub, but it just, it's very disconnected. And there's, you know, there, you can see on the screen, you know, the Korean actors are very clearly expressing some heightened emotions, and yeah. the, and the the English reader is just just elevating the tone of their voice. They're not really shouting as the actor is on screen. Yeah, there was there were scenes where you could see the actor, like the man who played Gi-hoon, um, Jung Jai Lee, he played Gi-hoon. There'd be scenes where he was just like, I'm, I obviously cannot speak Korean, but he, he would be talking with a very serious face and you could see that his... He wasn't making wild gestures. But then the English dad would be like, Oh, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> like it was just wildly out of sync with what the actor was portraying. So definitely watch it with watch it in Korean with the subtitles. It's worth it's worth watching that way. Uh, so yeah, definitely go watch it. And now I think we're going to dive into spoilers. So you've got like three seconds to turn this off before we hit spoilers. Ready? Three, two. One. Okay, spoilers time. Hmm. All right. So, I felt like the story had a good balance of being unpredictable, but not annoyingly so. It wasn't like Game of Thrones, where in order for them to subvert the audience's expectations, they just ruined the storyline. Mm -hmm. For me, there was a couple things I guessed. Like, I guessed the Song Wu was going to be like an evil jerk of a character. And what else did yeah. I guess? I guess there, that there the... There are a uh, bunch of different tropey type uh, thriller, horror film type tropes in, yeah. in it. That and, were, but they were done in a fresh enough way that they didn't feel tired or anything? They, yeah, they were. They may have, if this makes sense, they, they were kind of tropey in a sense, but they weren't hacky Yeah, like I, I guessed that the, uh, the detective's brother was the front man. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With no context, there was that is a that is actually something I will say about the series. There's a couple threads that I don't feel that they wound up satisfactorily. Oh, there's a ton and that, that was, they didn't at all. That was a major one for me. Was yeah. I loved the storyline with the detective finding out what was going on, and just impersonating these people. As they've got this body smuggling ring as these poor saps get. So maybe we should talk about the spoilers for this show if anybody is interested. In listening to this that hasn't seen it sure so basically if you could not guess this is very much so like the old roman gladiators where wealthy people are just bidding enormous amounts of money to watch people die yeah. for their amusement you know, battle royale to the death so yeah and, and it's all framed around korean children's games so and there's some so really that's another cultural disconnect for us because we didn't really going into the film have any concept of what these games might be although there were there it were was, a few that were like red light green light that's something yeah that, and it was really interesting to see those different games and think yeah. about what they could be for like the american versions like war. uh what was did you ever play what was that the hang dog game where you join arms and somebody runs and you have to oh, see if red they, rover red rover red rover like that would be yeah one probably we'd probably do like hopscotch instead mm -hmm. what's really interesting and i caught this and i think that you had missed it but they one of the rich vips when he came to watch the ending in person he said these korean games have been the best so far implying yeah. that they're happening around the world right and i thought that was a really interesting thing to think about so who knows maybe there were a bunch of in this alternate universe or if it's really happening who knows Maybe there's a bunch of sad sack Americans somewhere just red rovering each other's necks with like garroting wire or something. Maybe. Maybe each uh, each location has their own cultural games that they play. Yeah. So anyway, the, the story goes, gi -hoon is deeply in debt. Everybody who goes into this game is deeply in debt. They go through the first game, which is red light, green light. Most of them get massacred, and they yeah, all realize they that about, they're paying with their lives. They lose more than half. Of they the lose contestants. more than There's half like of over the contestants. Four hundred contestants. And, yeah, and they lose more than half. So they decide, almost in an even split, to stop the games, and to go back to their normal lives, which I was not yeah. expecting to happen. Well, that the, was a really interesting. The development. interesting concept of this film is that the organization that is doing this these death games they they are very fair open and honest about the rules they say it 
All of you volunteered to do this for one reason or another, so no one's being forced. Mm -hmm. You have to participate, and if you survive, you continue through the games. And then they have a couple of stipulations, such as if a majority of the remaining contestants want to opt out of playing the games, then they can do that by taking a vote, and if it passes, everyone gets to go home after, you know, seeing all the people die. Yeah. Which was really interesting because that actually happened in episode one. They go, or I'm sorry, in episode two, they go to the underground games. They play the first game. They lose, in episode one, they play the first game. They lose half the people and then yeah. they immediately vote to they're get like, the fuck no, out of there. They're like, there. they're like, this is nuts. And what's crazy, if you think about it, is the, the old man in the show ends up being the one who started the games. He's like a sneak player. And his vote is the deciding vote that lets them all go home. I think that's part of the mind game, so. Maybe. So, at any rate, they all vote to go. Half of them vote. I think it was like 101 people to 100 people vote to go yep. home. And then the, the and then they all decide to come back because they go back to, the episode's called Hell, and you see them go back to their lives their prior lives. to this. Yep. And they're, they're, they go through this decision-making process where they're like, I'm already living in hell. I might as well go back to the one that I was just in because I have a chance at making my life better. Yeah. So the 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 hosts of the games, after allowing them to vote out, voting to opt out of playing anymore, mm -hmm. they then um, offered them a second chance to come back into the game if anyone else was interested. So yeah. you know the the two hundred or so remaining survivors from the first game all voted to leave. Then they solicited those players again, and almost all of them returned back because yeah. they realized 100. after this 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 sort of uh, self realization that their actual life yeah. was more torturous than being in this death match. Yeah. So there was two hundred one of them that survived, and one hundred eighty seven returned, well, it's also, which is a ninety three percent return. Let's also right? mention why they're even playing. So there is a, a huge sum of money at stake. The, yeah. The surviving the surviving winner of the game gets to take home it was like the, to billion the total sum Korean dollars of the pot, and this pot is basically accounted by the number of players. So each player is worth, I think it was like four million won, and as they die off, this giant piggy bank that hangs over everyone's head gets illuminated and fills up with cash as yeah. people get you know taken out of the games so that's really the enticing factor and the driver for this whole story because everyone's desperate to win because they want that money but they're also kind of going back and forth with the realization that they're either afraid of dying they're afraid of killing or mm -hmm. they're coming to the realization that they are killers now because of the situation they put themselves in and yeah. some of them have no choice because they either die in here or they die out in the real world with their yeah. current situation. It's a really interesting exploration of the greed that humanity has. Like, you know, they say money is the root of all evil. It's yeah. it's amazing because you see like these normal people, you know, they start out like this one. The I would posit the most annoying character in the show. What on earth was her name? Min Nio Hell? Ni Wu? Mi Nio. Mi Nio. Oh my god. She starts out, well, I don't know if she was being honest, but she starts out like, I need to leave here. I need to get back to my child. And then she comes back and you're like, I can't wait for this woman to die. But yeah. the point is, they're all these normal people, or seemingly normal people, except for the one criminal guy. And they just become animalistic over money. And then the, the VIP is consuming the content and watching this happen. For their Even own don they don animal masks because they're animals as well. Mm -hmm. Just watching they're others almost, get slaughtered. Well, it's almost like metaphoric. You know, they're like the false gods. Yeah. You know, the golden ox and things like that. There's so a lot of symbolism. It, it really it, it shows just how money can um, can really um, manipulate the desperate and the destitute. You know, it, the, the well, it changes how you think. Like, remember how Bill Burr used to be very, like, for the people, and then he, he hit it big finally, and then he was, like, very anti-taxes, and he, like, changed his mind on a lot of issues? Yeah, but I... It's, like, interesting. I don't, it's just, I don't know that that's not abnormal. 
No, no. I'm, it's not abnormal at all. And I think that's what the show is exploring. Well, I, I think the show's going even more extreme than, than that Bill Burr example because this is showing people who literally, like the main character, owes tens of millions of won to loan sharks and debts. He owes, and, what, $40 million? And the the cash prize for these games is over 40 billion won so this this so not only it, this not only pays his debt off but this totally turns his life around yeah. this gets him out of debt this takes care of his mom and his her medical bills so to put this in perspective 40 million korean won at least south korean we should probably clarify that this takes place in south korea if we say korea we typically mean south korea uh, 43 billion Korean won is equal to about 36 million and change American yeah. dollars. And if you're in Australia, because I think some of you are in New Zealand and Australia, um, that's equal to about 50 million Australian dollars or so. Yeah. So these these contestants that are playing have nothing abnormally large debts, like more right. s- more so than any normal person's debt would be. These these are the, like there's like a, gambling th- addicts. There's there's a guy who is the supposed childhood friend of the main character named uh, San Wu, mm-hmm. who you know he just lost everything. You know the the horse and the farm in the stock market, and it was like he in, like it was like billion. over over billion yeah over billion dollars or in won. So the, every contestant had their own horrific debt that they were just trying to run from the entire time. And this game was literally the one shot to completely turn their life around, yeah. but, but at the ultimate cost of either losing their own life or just, you know, killing everyone else to survive. Yeah, and it was... And it was all at the these rich, rich people's amusement. Yeah, it was... Which you don't figure out until the maybe like three quarters of the way into the series. It's like the seventh episode. You don't get introduced into the what they call the VIPs, which are these these six rich people who they don't they, they never identify other than the animal masks that they wear. It's sort of like a masquerade party. Yeah, in many ways, it was definitely like an Epstein Island, except it was for violence, and it was. Um, I tell you what, if I had so. I don't know if I've ever shared this, but I wanted to be a professor. That's what I originally went to college for. If I had actually continued within that chosen career and I had become a professor, I would have had a field day with this show, with the amount of symbolism that was in it. Mm -hmm. Because this show, every single detail was so well thought out. We keep straying from the storyline because we keep getting caught up in it. But um, So they get through the games. Gi-hoon, his childhood friend, Song Woo, and then this North Korean defector... Uh, whose name was Ho Yun Jung? Was that no. her name? Kang Se Byok, I think. Kang Se Byok. That actress. The actress's name is Ho Yun Jung. Right. She well, she's not even an actress. I guess she was a model, which you, kind of makes can... sense because I was like, man, this girl's not really a great actor. Well, I mean, she <laughs> was she, acting uh, in the film. So. Yeah, but she she did a she did a decent job. So they were the three remaining people that managed to survive, and you kind of just see how. Gihun watches his childhood friend just become this completely bloodthirsty killer who's just dis- has a complete and utter disregard for human life at this point. Just sacrifices people left and right to get all this money. You think he was bloodthirsty? Do you think that's a fair assessment? I guess maybe he was money thirsty. That's a better way to. It was just greed. I don't know. He was like, yeah, I think it was just desperation, right? Well, he was like, I'm not getting out of here unless it's with that money. Right. So he ended up, he like sacrificed the guy. He sacrificed the, um, the poor Pakistan guy, Mm -hmm. the guy from Pakistan, Ali. Ali. He sacrificed him knowing he had a kid. He sacrificed, uh, the girl. He sacrificed the guy who was in front of him. He just shoved him through the glass. Like, all right, good job. (laughs) We gotta, we gotta go. Yeah. So Gihun just watched this guy completely lose his humanity. I suppose I should say for so, money. I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with the assessment of that character. I would say he is more. He's in. He's intelligent, and that's probably part of the problem. Is because he understands what's at stake at all times. Right. He knows there can be only one winner, and it's winner take all. So. So one other stipulation to the rules was if that 
any of the remaining contestants at any point in time want to vote to opt out of the games like they did on after the first game and no one decides to come back then the victims um their their loved ones get a split of whatever the pot is so oh, that's so, right. so the winnings actually go to the dead that's right i forgot about that their families so, so that was also a big reason why song woo stayed in the game because he says if we don't see this through the end then all of this would have been for nothing because yeah. the money is going to go to the dead and every single person has their own reason for needing that money because song woo he he had he was going to lose his life his mom was going to lose her house and her store well he was so, when you when they go back to their lives, you see he's about to kill himself. Well, right. Anyway. Yeah, there was a scene where he felt he like was, he had nothing. To he was on the brink of committing suicide, happened. and then he got solicited to re-enter the games, and he took it. But that being said, I I would say, you know, it was what he did morally justified at all? Absolutely not. I think it was more of watching him slowly descend. Not into madness, but into no. He just walled off darkness. his humanity. Right. Well, he lost it. He just well, that's you what just I watch said. it. Yeah, you just, disagree with me. Well, you said he was bloodthirsty, and well, I, that's more I or less what I did. It, though he lost yeah. his humanity, and then he he didn't regain it until the very end. He and Gihun just basically beat the pulp out of each other. Yeah, they're the final and he contestants. Ended up sacrificing himself, and then yeah. So honestly, guys, he did that thing. Like, he had a nice arc. He, Gihun did that thing where he. He put a knife right next to the guy's head, and he's like, I'm going to spare you. And he went to win, and he stopped, and he was like, we're not going to do this. And I was just waiting for Song Wu to grab the knife and just stab him in the back. Because at that point, you had seen a lot of that behavior. reasons to suggest that. You know, right. he, he's a backstabber. He's a trickster. He's very intelligent and cunning. And at the very end, he seemed to realize, like, he reconnected with his own sense of morality, and he was like you know what, I can't, he was like, Gihun, you deserve this, basically, and just take care of my mom, please. And he sacrificed himself so that Gihun could win. And then honestly, the ending, this leads us to the ending, there were some things I really liked about that ending, and then other things like that pissed me off, because Gihun returns to his house, you find out he's won this 44 billion won, or whatever it was, he finds his mother dead because she died from her diabetes when he was gone. Mm -hmm. Too late for her surgery because he re-entered to pay for her surgery. Because he wasn't around to take care of her. He wasn't there to take care of her. Because he was trying to win this game. And then it says one year later. And this mother fluffer not only doesn't help the, the orphan boy like he promised... Sabiok, excuse me. He, like he promised Sabiok, he doesn't take care of Song Wu's mom, who at this point is like in a tent on the street. Yeah. <laughs> he just is a sad sack suffering from PTSD. And like, I get it, but at least like take care of the people that you said you would. You know what I mean? Like, that really bothered me. And then the end, he was finally pulling himself together and he dyed his hair this ridiculously fun color. And he was about to go see his daughter and be a dad for the first time. And then they left it on this cliffhanger. He, he calls, he sees the guy that initiated him into the games, steals the new contact card and calls them. And he's like, I'm going to, he basically implies he's going to find them. And it's and he just he's walks sort of off like, all angrily, just leaves his daughter again. I was like, I, this is casually, not satisfying. He sort of casually threatens them. Yeah. Like, what's he going to do? He won all that money, but these are the people that had that money to spare. Well, like these, he's these not are gonna essentially do the shit people that like people. run the world, you know, like Illuminati level do. power and money. He won thirty eight million dollars. You cannot, <laughs> you can't like take down an empire with that. Not, I don't know. Maybe yeah. you could. I don't. I, maybe I'm underestimating Gihun, but well, I mean that was that was the reason why I didn't really care for the ending. I liked, I, I liked uh, seeing him take care of the brother of the. Uh, you know, the female contestant who by, by, by the way was a, a north korean defector yeah that was that was also an interesting sort of uh detail it, it was kind of cool to i guess as a as a foreigner see a little bit of south korean north korean culture and, and how they interact with each other like even yeah even how the south koreans viewed and treated north koreans some of them were very receiving and welcoming and others were I must look down on them. Yeah, you know, like, like oh, you're oh, gonna you're... come burden us now. Right, you're like you're you're filth. You're 
your scum type of stuff. So you, yeah. you could see the, uh, I don't want to say it's racism, but the prejudice between the North and the South. The animosity, certainly. Yeah, yeah. So there was, so there was that, that was my part of the dissatisfaction with the ending. The other dissatisfaction that I felt with the ending was there was this thread that we touched on earlier where a detective puts the pieces together. His brother's been missing. He finds one of the one of the games cards in his brother's room. Um, he overheard Gi Hoon attempting to report to the cops what was going on. And the guy manages to squirrel himself away onto the ship that takes them to Murder Island and masquerades as the the workers there and he does a really it's a really fascinating storyline like watching him do this stuff but then yeah. honestly I've... his brother shoots him so he dies because his brother's the front man which i guessed he dies and then nothing it doesn't go anywhere there's no explanation for why the brother is there and i think they tried to put that together and there's a final conversation with gihoon and the front man as they're driving the lone survivor back to the to the mainland but it does not fill in any gaps it's just it's completely and then he shows up again at the end where the old man finally reveals to Gihoon that he was the one who orchestrated everything and Gihoon gets very upset and the old man dies of natural causes Gihoon leaves and then the detective's brother shows up again and he just stares out the window and it's like okay I don't know, maybe this is a Korean nuance I'm missing, but it just didn't seem well put together. To, like, there was no ending to that storyline for me. Yeah. I was I, like, what's, what was the I, point I, of it? I think that might have been intentional. I, I honestly found myself more interested in the detective character throughout the, the series than any other. Any other players? Like, Gihoon was fine and all, but <clears throat> they did a really good job of making you just feel like... Like this guy's life sucks. And, yeah. And maybe maybe I'm not sympathetic to the character, but I, I even said it out loud one episode. I said, "Man, this guy fucking sucks." You, you I was said like, he is. You're just, like, I hate following him. He in is these just episodes. He is just like he does nothing to prevent the things that happen to him negatively. Like he's he's always borrowing and losing money. He's he's gambling what little little he has, and then in every scene, you know, he's smoking cigarettes and he's drinking. And well, I think listen, that was I, the I, point. They I weren't come supposed from a to life, be like they weren't supposed to be likable characters. I come from a life where I know what that's like to have no money and then spend it, spend what little money you have on frivolous things like cigarettes and alcohol, and that's that's not a way to live. But and then also too, you know, he's like. He, he at one point he, he had enough money to buy his daughter a nice birthday gift he screws that up he ends up missing his train home like like I was just like how many things can you just keep messing up in sequence at to, to the point where you're just like okay this has got to stop I gotta I gotta actually step in and take control of my life here and I just found myself like man this guy is driving me up the wall <laughs> I can't supposed take to. his bad luck is pissing me off. I don't think that any of the characters were supposed to be likable except for the detective. I, for some reason, found myself liking the snake tattoo gangster mob guy. I he, hated that guy. I think I liked him because he was so... Just blatantly snaky? Cutthroat. Oh. And, I mean, I, I didn't... From a moral standpoint, I obviously don't like him, but his character... Well, like, 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 I like how when... One of his little uh, underlings met him after he got out of the first game, and he's like, "Oh, you were gone a couple days. We were we were wondering where you went." Blah blah blah. Okay, we're gonna. So he he creates this scheme. He's like, "We're gonna. I'm oh, gonna. We're gonna infiltrate I'm, the I'm gonna go back into the game, but we're gonna get all of our goons together. So get as many weapons as you can because we're gonna rip these people off because yeah. they got a ton of money inside. And what ended up happening? What is his, his little goon? His set, goon betrayed set, him. Set him up because. This this mafia guy from the had, had a massive debt to a was it Filipino from the casino? Philippines, yeah, Filipino casino. He owned like owed millions of dollars. That so, is a fun phrase to say, Filipino casino. Yeah, so he ended up getting set up and delivered to a bridge where a bunch of Filipinos were going to come and collect his debts, aka break his legs. <laughs> so gonna break more than his legs. So his little goons like mocking him and laughing at him in the car, and this guy just 
you see the type of person he is. He just flips a switch. As his buddy goes to exit the vehicle, he immediately stabs him in the leg and then climbs out of the car over his body and repeatedly knifes him in the back while these Filipinos, there's probably like 10 of them, watching him knife this guy in the back. And then he just stands up and goes, he goes, hello, welcome to Korea. He goes, welcome to South Korea. And they all chase after him and he just jumps off this bridge into the water to escape. It was just totally like, I was like, okay, this guy's a psychopath. Yeah, he was. That guy was, that guy was interesting. I, I didn't like him because he was, I mean, for obvious reasons, like yeah. I just don't like. It's well, the same yeah, reason I can't about play. Him was wrong. It's the same reason I can't play bad guys in video games. So I just feel too bad. But the honestly, the one character that I really hated was that Minio woman. She was so. Well, she's just annoying. Annoying. Yeah. She just. So they did a good job always, writing that character. Oh my god! And the actress did a great job of portraying her because she was annoying AF. Yep. She was always inserting herself into situations. She was always shrieking. Like, nothing she ever bold, said was in a normal time. Bold at the wrong place. time. Cowardly at the wrong time. Yeah. It was just just another one of those characters that you love to hate when yep. you watch. You're like, oh, I can't wait till this person dies. Yeah. And, but then at the end, when she does die, it was a redeeming moment. Where it's like, she, it was. she, killed, she her, killed the criminal she, guy. Because he, he was enough of a douchebag. You know, she he, swore revenge. She swore revenge. Because and she, she she tried to make an alliance with them. I think she knew that they were they weren't gonna make it anyway, and she was like, "Well, I'm gonna go out for sure, and I'm gonna take you with me this time." Well, I think after she realized her manipulation wasn't going to work on anyone, because that's that's sort of the the core of her character. She's a big manipulator. Right? Yeah. She she has a ton of flaws that she hides by manipulating people into giving them what they want, whether it's. Uh, uh, lip service or sexual favors or whatever she'll do it because that's just the type of character she was and when she realized that her charm wasn't working on anyone you watched her as she got betrayed by the the mob boss she just went dead inside and she swore revenge on it she says she says as long as i survive you're dead. Yeah. And, what and was she just great waited too, for her moment. What was great, too, is I think that guy realized that she was a psycho in that moment. And then when they came back and she had she didn't get partnered up, so they all thought she was going to be killed. But the point, one of the big things in the games is that everybody gets an equal chance. And since there wasn't enough people, because the underground organ smuggling doctor was killed. Speaking of which, I never figured out. he's He looks like the Korean version of that one actor that always plays a Nazi with round glasses. And I cannot find that guy. I can't remember what he's in. It's driving me insane. So, guys, if you know who Start I'm talking about... Nazi scientist. It's not... Nazi it's, doctor. It's not the guy from <laughs> Captain America or Wonder Woman. Okay. And it's it's not the guy who was in the computer with Captain not America. from Inglorious Bastards. It's not the guy from Inglorious Bastards. It's the other guy. It's driving me insane. He's got, like, a shorter nose... Anyway, this Korean doctor looks just like him. So anyway, the Korean doctor who's in there to smuggle organs gets killed off because he loses his mind and like betrays all of the people that he's smuggling organs with. No. That's not why he died. Well, he attacked no. them. So he was getting he, betrayed them, he right? was getting fed intel which is against the rules. Well, then they killed him for that reason. He killed them because one night while he was well, he Organ. was well. He was prepping organs to be smuggled. The soldiers who normally feed him intel didn't have the intel that night, so mm-hmm. he panicked because he said, "Well, the game's tomorrow morning, so you guys better figure it out because I'm doing my job, yeah, and you're not he... doing yours." So that's when he snapped because he, he realized snapped. he was screwed because his intel on the games was the only way he was surviving up to that point because he knew what the game was and how to prep for it. Yeah. Regardless, she got left behind because that guy, his storyline uh, got terminated just like his life was terminated. And so we all thought she was dead and so did they. And then they came back and she was in the bed and she just laughs at the criminal guy. And you just watch the guy's blood drain out of his face and he's right. like, no. It's like he saw a ghost. Yeah, and then she took him down. He was like, no. There, it's, it's very hard to tell when the... Uh, the game hosts are going to step in and start killing people for in, enforcing certain rules or impropriety. In yeah, their not not letting 
the contestants do certain things because there there's a lot of uh, um, unknown unknown sort of parameters that happen. Like there's, yeah, the there's a moment where they in, intentionally give them less food during one night to entice a, uh, a fight a fight at night and hopefully kill but, off some contestants. But the rules that they tell the people is that violence against other players won't be tolerated. So they deliberately initiated violence and they didn't step in until a bunch of them were dead. Right. But then if there is violence and they happen to be in the room they'll step in and violently right. put an end to the violence. So I, I think that's what it's it is. It's very contradictory. Yeah, it's like no violence against any other contestant in their presence. Mm -hmm. It almost seemed like. And so at that that one particular instance where this woman sort of got to skip playing a game was because there was an odd number and they all had to pair up. Um, so yeah, that was... And that was kind of a... I think I was a little disappointed, too, with that mafia guy because I was like, oh, finally, she's going to get killed. Because it was just based on how <laughs> based on how every day had sort of gone, you just sort of assumed that the way the, way the phrasing of the rules of the game they were going to play were if it was assumed that if you couldn't find a partner for this next game, then you were going to get eliminated vis-a-vis -vis get killed. So everyone was just like, okay, well, we're going to pair up and whoever the odd man out is because the doctor that morning had been shown as dead. Right. Everyone knew, okay, we're not an even number of players anymore. We're an odd number, so there's going to be one out. And it ended up being that woman. I, even me as the viewer, I was like, oh, okay, she's gone. I was like, Because oh, it shows God. a scene where she's like freaking out, panicking, and the yeah, soldiers just them ominously, ominously walk up to her. And then With it, their guns. And then it cuts to... Yeah. And then it goes to the games, and then after the games, it cuts to their little dorm area, and she's laying there like she just had the most lovely sleep ever. <laughs> well, she probably did. That's probably the only time they were able. she was able to sleep in peace, since there was all that murdering going on the last couple nights. Yeah. But, um, anyway, is there anything that you would have changed about the show? Like, do you have an idea for how you would have hoped the ending would have been? Well, like I, like I stated earlier, in the beginning, I would have liked to have seen this story wrap up in one season. Yeah. And I don't... If if they don't make a second season, I would be very surprised with the popularity that this is getting. And I'm not really on board with watching a second season, if I'm being honest. So with that, I would say I would have liked to have seen more with the detective brother, because they really gave you a lot with him. You know, they at least cut to him in every episode yep. after they introduced him into the story. So, yep. so like I said, for me, I actually found myself more interested in him uncovering the mystery of what this is all about. Because you're wondering that anyway when you follow the main character. You're like, what is what is going on here? Why are, why are we here doing this? Right. Other than we know why the contestants are there, but we don't know why the games are happening. Who's What's their motivation? Why do they want to democratically allow these people to kill themselves off and fair fairly and justifiably and you know they they defend the rules literally to the death like even if the soldiers break the rules like take off their mask or speak yeah, when the they're soldiers not supposed get to killed. the soldiers will get killed and every all all of the soldiers and the workers for these games they're all masked so you never know their identity and it's really interesting you know i actually so unlike a lot of people especially during this pandemic who have expressed that they hate wearing the masks and i mean i get it they're not comfortable to wear all the time but i love getting to wear a mask because i don't have people as i've told you i don't have people constantly telling me i should be smiling i don't have to put on makeup like i don't have to my thoughts are my own and if i put on sunglasses like street cameras can't facially id me and recognize me i just really like that feeling of anonymity but it's interesting to see that flipped in a show like this where a face of anonymity truly becomes a face of terror and in many ways when i when i first started watching the show it's kind of like are they trying to do like with the mask thing like for v for vendetta no, guy fox the guy fox mask like are they trying to turn into because i could totally see people being the front man or being one of those being either a soldier or a worker or a supervisor, whatever they call them, for like Halloween or for for protests or sure. even, yeah, it was the worker, the soldier, and the manager. Yeah, those are, so it was the circle masks were the workers, 
the triangles were the triangles soldiers. were the soldiers and the managers which there were few yeah were the squares yeah and then the the front man was the the geo <laughs> you think it's funny shaped. that the managers were the squares like you know people are always like be there be square because squares like kill the vibes like the managers are like the squares because they kill the vibes <laughs> what was that the ikea guy he was like <laughs> you want me to go get a manager Managers don't know what's going on. Haven't you worked anywhere before? <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Uh, Steve something or other. Yeah. He's funny. In all fairness, though, to my current manager, he definitely knows what's going on. I like my, my new boss. Probably to a point. I'm sure he's got his flaws. Oh, I'm sure everybody's got their flaws, right? Yeah. So. Um, at any rate, yeah. yeah so. I mean, I, I could, you know, I could change a lot about this. I Like I said, I think it's good. Um, the ending does is it what... make, does it make me want a second season? Not really, because quite honestly, it's it's uh, I, I don't it's I don't like know a if, one and done. Well, I was gonna say it's kind of an emotional roller coaster, and like I feel a little exhausted after watching. Like I'm done. Yeah, there's a lot of anxiety in these games watching them. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Like there was something about the there's a lot of suspense, and it's like I can only handle so much suspense. But I, it's, I would need a conclusion. But it's weird because, again, like we were discussing, it's very similar to the Hunger Games movies. But I can watch and read the Hunger Games repeatedly. And then you know I do that like every year. I don't think I could watch this every year. I think I could probably watch this one more time. Yeah, but see, the thing maybe about, twice the, in the, my thing about life. the Hunger Games, at least the movies, I haven't read the books, but there's explanation. You understand the society, why, why the Hunger Games are, what they are, what what their purpose is yeah, there's a deeper history here you don't you don't understand the purpose and that was sort of what the intent of the detective was he was going to uncover the why and the where and the who right of what's going on and then at the end he ends up getting killed by his brother yeah and so just it's like, not really you're revealed. like well, what what the hell's like there goes that thread i guess is that how they tie up that loose end they don't want to explain that or is he going to come back because i got to be honest with you i don't know how many more episodes I can last to see him come back? The detective Juno. Right, right. Oh, yeah. The ending, the ending could have been better for me. I think that that thread should have been. I mean, I say this having no directing experience whatsoever, right? I feel like his his thread and the brothers' thread should have been tied off better, and then I feel like the ending. I mean, it doesn't need to be like a happy go lucky peachy keen ending. But there were some things about the ending that were just infuriating, like I said, where he just bailed on his promises and things didn't make sense either. Like if he owed all this money when he went into the games and they make a point of saying several times that he never touched any of the money that he won. Before he went into the games, he had people telling him that they were going to kill him for his organs or take his organs. And they're also looking for him. And they were looking for him. So he didn't touch any of the money and he continued to, quote, live the way that he had been living. So that implying as a chauffeur. Or begging. how Or begging. Because he's a beggar. How did he survive that? Like, that just... Some of the... Well, he basically just getting, became a bum. I guess that's supposed to be assumed. I guess, but he didn't look like a bum. And they said he was... I don't know. So there was a couple things. I would have just made it make a little more sense. Like, I don't have an objection to the fact that the old man was the orchestrator. I don't have an objection to the fact that, you know, he finally turned everything around and adopted the poor little boy from the orphanage and gave her to song Wu's mom i just i for me i would have liked to have seen that happen a little earlier in the timeline and i could have gone without the him deciding to bail on his daughter again because i feel like he bailed on his family the first time it was a big lesson he bailed on his daughter and his mom to go play these games for money mm-hmm and then he's about to go make things right with his daughter, and he bails on her again for the games. Granted, maybe not for money this time, but he's still bailing on her yet again. I was like, yeah, I felt like he didn't learn anything. Well, the the one consistent theme to that character, though, is that he seems to have a, more or less a good moral compass. Mm. So maybe he felt like this was serving a, a higher good or a higher purpose. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I can I can even get behind the notion that well he was mentally suffering for that year which was why he didn't help uh sangwoo's mother or the uh 
the brother of the North Korean woman. Maybe this is why I don't buy it. And and it's like okay, you know, I I can understand, I I can suspend disbelief if if that's what the director says that was the intent. Like oh, he's he's trying to figure things out because he even calls, you know, he calls the uh, the number on the back of the card to threaten them, and he he said. He was like, so get on the plane. No, he said, so it wasn't a dream. Because I think in his mind, he was he was trying to figure he out. He was rationalizing He was it. like, was any of that real? Like, that was so crazy to him. He didn't know if it was real. And it, early on, you realize he entered the game already suffering from PTSD. From, right. From a, a worker strike. Yeah. And he watched one of his, I guess, friends and coworkers die in front of him. And that yeah. really traumatized him. So... Maybe that was sort of the thing that always drove him to want to help people rather than hurt them. Yeah, but the thing is, even if he had PTSD because of his guilt and whether or not he thought it was a dream, if you're feeling guilty and you know that your your friend died and your the, the girl that you had promised to help her brother had died, wouldn't the guilt drive you to immediately help those people as requested? Versus just sit on your bupkis for a year. I guess maybe if if you want the character to be more like a, like an American character, where they just sort of go through a traumatic well, I don't know action that would... action movie and then they snap out of it and then I'm not saying the happy snap ending. out of it, but I'm saying if he's morally if he's driven by a moral compass to help people, PTSD or not, if he's feeling guilty over everything that happened, you would think he would try to as assuage or as what is that how you say that word? Assuage, assuage that guilt by helping the people that he said he would or even if he didn't say he would that he had been requested to help and he just doesn't he just sits on it and just watches their lives just be miserable yeah but me maybe you're just un- underestimating the effects of ptsd maybe but because either it, way it can, it can be mentally crippling physically crippling for some and it can cause people to freeze and just stay in that moment locked in there until they figure out how to get get out of it. That's fair. You know, I've not I've not had PTSD to that extreme, so I don't know. Yeah. So that is a very fair point. So that again, that that's one interpretation. We don't know. It's not really confirmed in the yeah. final episode, so you know, I I base that all on theories and assumptions. Yeah. But uh, that's one possibility. Yeah, it could could have just been that. It was just sloppy writing, and it's like, oh, yeah, a whole year went by, and he just kind of forgot about all the things he promised to take care of. Oh. It just seemed out of character. But then again, you know, they did, as you pointed out, there was mention of his PTSD previously, so perhaps it yeah. compounded, and it was very in character, and I just the show does, missed. The show does focus a lot on mental trauma as well you know you're you're yeah throughout the games you're you're seeing the viewpoint of the contestants even even characters that they don't even introduce you're just seeing the viewpoint of different contestants like there was one game where they had to pair up with the marbles yeah so everyone's like oh we're gonna pick we're gonna pick our friends we're gonna pick our buddies we're gonna pick our spouses and then you find out that the game is they have to play against each other yeah and only one one person can walk out of their life so there were some like husband and wife pairs there were yeah best friends um you know all all sorts of fucked up scenarios like that where you're like you're like oh man i didn't want to see those two go up against each other you know like the old man and gihun, gihun who who had they were created, like we're gonna be a, gongbu best friends yeah they created a bond and you and on then you find out one of them's got to get eliminated and and you know okay well it can't be the main character so the old man's got to go yeah it was uh it was interesting yeah do i do i think that this show is like the best show i've ever seen because i've heard some people say that no yeah i would say based on my um disinterest in a second season no well, disinterest in a second season doesn't mean you don't appreciate the first one. It just means you feel like they should have conclusively, or it had been concluded in a way that satisfied you with one season. I, but, just, I understand that, but it doesn't make me thirst for more. I don't. Well, I don't think thirsting for more is a marker of whether or not a show is good. Um. 
well, either a show has to have a good conclusion, which it didn't, or it's got to make me want more, which it didn't. Uh, yep. So it wasn't like season one Game of Thrones where I couldn't wait to see the se- second season, right? <laughs> Instead, it was like season eight of Game of Thrones where, where I couldn't, couldn't wait, wait for to it forget to, about I it. I couldn't wait for it to be over. I yep. was like, well, they done fucked this one up. So it wasn't that bad. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't not wait for this to be over. Like you, you and I were pretty excited yeah. to finish this series. So it's f- a good series. I just don't think it is as good as it is being hyped to be. And I think part of that is because so many film and TV productions these days have been insanely derivative. And that's also why I think like last year, what was the um, Parasite? Was it last year? Parasite or 2019? Yeah. Parasite, another South good. Korean production, was like a smash hit. And I think it's because... That was a miniseries, right? Out, No, it was a film. Oh, so right, right. Outside of the U.S., these filmmakers have not just stuck to these boring, bland, save-the-cat screenplay formula that the United States production companies have just bogged themselves down in. So what they're doing is fresher and more interesting to us because it's not the same formula repeated over and over again. I wonder if Korean film producers, or whatever you want to call them, fall under under the same umbrella as like the Chinese production. Because that's, that's sort of what's happening now in the U.S. is a lot of the filmmakers in the U.S. are making films to cater to Chinese audience. So that might be a reason why films over the years have sort of tailored to a very cookie cutter format of we go from A to B to C to D and all the movies kind of feel the same. You know, I have nothing against the Chinese people, but the Chinese government is just, but we don't need to talk about that on an entertainment podcast, so never mind. But uh, yeah, I would say... (laughs) Susan Wojcicki's got to find my tiny little post and be like, you talked about China yeah. Band. <laughs> you don't insult our evil overlords. But, uh. <laughs> but Susan Wojcicki w- is literally the alien in Futurama that's like, I for one, or what is it, the human? I for one welcome our alien overlords. Yeah. That's Susan Wojcicki with China. But I would, I would say a concluding thought would be the series was good overall. The ending was sort of uh, middle of the road for me. Like I said, it, it didn't, it didn't end on a high note and it doesn't make me want want to view more of it so, that said it's better than any american show i've watched in a long time uh in recent time yeah mm, yeah i can't i can't recall any, i can't any remember it, like series. a good show most of the american films and tv shows that i think i've seen in the last couple of years have been other than a couple like mcu standouts they've been intensely forgettable to the point where i have to think very hard to remember like even do you remember shazam in 2019 yeah that was a good movie and i still barely remember yeah. shazam for example that's dc though and they just they just have a, a bad a okay. bad a bad rep for... well let's talk about like wonder woman i love wonder woman i still i rarely first think, one was good i rarely think about wonder woman what do you think about the second wonder woman i refuse to watch it you know that <laughs> But my point being is, like, Wonder Woman was great. I love that movie. Do I consistently think about Wonder Woman? No. But since watching this show, have I consistently thought about it? Yeah. It's been like one of those mind worms that just kind of crawls in there and slithers around and you can't get rid of it. What, um, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a category for this film, but, um, unless you know it already, but what do you, what would you categorize this film as? What type of film would it be? Like if you, I'll give you an example of what I think it would be. It would be like a psychological horror thriller. Well, I would think it would be like a thriller horror. Yeah, but psychological, I think, is a key thing because it I sh- think that's what a thriller is. It's more psychological. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we can we can double check just so we're not spouting off nonsense. It is late. Sorry, guys. Listen, it's, it's late. It's, we're it's both the internet. Sick. It's the internet, and I'm entitled to my opinion. <laughs> I like how I just I looked up thriller and it's just giving me Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Thriller. <laughs> well, I mean, you done played yourself, so. <laughs> thriller is a genre of fiction having numerous, often overlapping subgenres. Well, thank you. That's not Characterized helpful. Characterized and defined by, by what? Uh, let's see. 
Defined the by moods, moods they elicit heightened feelings of suspense, excitement, surprise, anticipation, and anxiety. So what's a, what's a psychological thriller? Is that a thing? I don't know. Let's look it up. Because it may be a little more into the into the psyche. Well, I don't know if this is as much a psychological thriller because there was very real danger. So it's a uh, genre combining thriller and psychological fiction. Literature are films that deal with psychological narratives. I suppose some of the subplots in this film or in this series so were it's a psychological a sub, thriller. Subgenre. I would say there was the overall was a psychological or a thriller horror, and then there were subplots of psychological thriller. Yeah, certainly so because it heavily dives into, you know, what the people are thinking when all this is going on. Or the implications of it. One thing I really liked about this show, speaking of implication, was that unlike a lot of American films, it didn't spell everything out for you. Yeah, show not Like they, they treated the audience as intellectual beings. Right. And you were left to figure it out for yourself. Right. There's no, uh, there's no, um, what is it? What do they call it? Uh, where the, the character just goes off on like, let me explain to you my grand plan. Exposition. Yeah, there's no exposition. So... And I, I like films that do more of the show not tell aspect of filmmaking. I like shows that show because it also it also makes you wonder about the things that they don't necessarily explain clearly to you. Yeah, through showing and, it, and it, I like that. It's fun. It leaves more to interpretation. Like what did the what did it mean to you? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, there, Garth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. <laughs> well, it is over an hour already, and here you were saying that you didn't think you could talk about this show. Yeah. But I think you had some thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, go so, go watch it. You'll you'll enjoy it if you like thrillers. Yeah, so this one's you can find on Netflix. At this point you could probably find it online somewhere too. Yeah. But it's if you have Netflix, it's yeah. on Netflix. It's popular for a reason. And yeah. if uh if you like thriller battle royale type films uh with some subtitles then this is right up your alley if you want to watch something that makes you think and it's not just a repeat or a clone of everything else like most of what is put out these days seems to be then this show will make you happy all right and with that i think we're gonna we're gonna say good night i will be back to talk about kotor stuff because do not think king baking will tell you guys like, I was getting ready for bed when I heard the news, and I was on the couch, and I started shrieking, and you didn't know what was wrong with me. Yeah, and then there was no bed. There was no bedtime. There was no bedtime. I was yeah. just, like, I might awake actually, for a long time. I might actually play Kotar. Kotar. Ko- Kotar? Kotor. You're not worthy. <laughs> I may play the Kotar. You failed me for the last yeah. time. <laughs> I might play that there Kotar <laughs> for the first time. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I'm sick. You know, I, I could never get into it. Because I found out about it too late, so the graphics, you know, and the controls just didn't translate well for me. I'm that type of player. I can play a lot of older nostalgic games, but certain ones that just have poor combat systems or whatnot. It's like The Witcher. Yeah, Witcher 1 was oh, was man. a rough one. I that couldn't get rough. through that. That was rough. But yeah, I might actually play KOTOR for the first time when it's uh, digitally remastered. That might be fun, because I like Star Wars a lot, and I like... Uh, I just hope they don't ruin it. Well, as long as they don't... Re- redo the story i have fears with disney but that will be another say it in Yoda, another Yoda discussion voice. fears with disney i have <laughs> 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 all right catch you later bacon the path to the dark side you are traveling